Hello and welcome to the Crafty Corner. Today I'm going to be telling you about the new Funky Junkie blog challenge. Our theme for this week is going to be snarky, silly, sassy, summer fun. And the challenge is going to be open from June 16th through June 29th. I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out. I can't wait to see all of your fun makes. So today I'm going to be making a permade card. What's a permade, you ask? Well, a permade is a cross between a kitty cat and a mermaid, hence permaid. So go ahead and pause so you can find out exactly what materials you'll need if you'd like to craft along with me. I'm going to be showing you a few of my favorite distress techniques with this card. So now let's head over to the crafty corner. To start, we're going to be making the tail for our permade. So I'm going to be using a tag and my Tim Holtz stencil with scales THMS 140. With that, we're going to be using some translucent grit paste. And I'm also going to be using one of the Ranger palette knives. So we're going to put our stencil over the tag and we're going to smush some of our translucent grit paste through it. I want to cover pretty much the entire tag with this, so we're just going to smush that all over our stencil. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll just put a little bit of the excess back into the jar and we'll set the jar aside and I'm making sure that I'm covering it with some of my press and seal. That helps make sure that our medium won't dry out. Now we'll just take the stencil off and I'm going to dunk the stencil into my container of water off to the side. Now that we have our translucent grit paste on here, it's time to add some color to our scales. We're going to be making a rainbow mermaid tail today. So I've got four different distress glazes. We're going to be using some broken china, kitsch flamingo, fossilized amber, and of course, some salvaged patina. And I'm going to put down a piece of scrap paper so that I can catch the extra bits of distressed glaze that will be falling off the tag. So I'm going to start with some of the pink and I'm just going to sprinkle that on in little pinches here and there. It's looking good. Then I'm going to go in for some fossilized amber. Now let's add some broken china. and some salvage patina. And I am going to go back with a little bit more Kitsch Flamingo, just so I can attempt to get a bit of purple in some spots. and a little bit more salvage patina. Okay, now we're just going to tap under the tag and make sure that we've got some good coverage with our distress embossing glaze. Okay. 
Okay. That is looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to set this aside for about 15 minutes so that our glaze and translucent grit paste can adhese. While we wait for our mermaid tail to dry, let's start on the other half of our permade. To do that, we're going to need a stamping platform. Or you could use an acrylic block. But because I'm doing the stamp and layer technique that Tim has shown on his YouTube channel, I prefer to use a stamping platform. So I'm going to stick down our background. I used some paper from the Tim Holtz Ideology Backgrounds Collection number one, and we are going to be stamping our snarky cat on here. Before stamping our snarky cat, I am going to point out that I did add some distress ink to this background. I inked from this corner to about here with some chip sapphire, then added a gradient of blueprint sketch, melding into some dusty conquered and then some wilted violet. All right, let's put our snarky cat over here. And we're gonna tilt him a little bit at an angle. Now I'm going to slip a piece of paper under part of him so I will be able to attach the tail after. I'm just gonna slip that piece of paper to about here. And I'm going to need a second piece of paper to cover the tail. And we'll slip the second piece right over here. Okay. And since this is a dark background, I'm going to be stamping with some Distress Picket Fence. Now I don't need this stamping to be perfect. I just need enough ink on here so that I'll be able to see where my lines are when I go to add my paint layers. After I'll come back and stamp with some black soot distress archival ink. Right now, I just wanna know about where my cat is. Okay, and that gives me a good start so I can start painting. And we'll just bring this down a little bit. Now for paint, I'm going to be using some spiced marmalade, some vintage photo, and some more picket fence.
Okay, and time to stamp. So we'll just move this out a little bit and we will start our first layer. Okay, that is looking pretty good. So I need to do a little bit of touch up and then we'll move on to some details. Now we're going to stamp again using our black archival ink to give the outlines and the details of the cat some more definition. As I'm applying the ink, I'm trying to avoid the curve of the upper leg and the tail of the cat. I'm even going to wipe a bit of these pieces off to avoid getting ink where I don't want it. Okay, I am pretty happy with that. I just need to cover up a little bit on the cat's tummy and we'll call this stage done. Okay. We're going to set this aside for now. Now that our tag is dry, let's emboss this and see how our permade scales turned out. And here is our finished tag. I love how the embossing powder has melted together in different spots and we have more of a rainbow gradient, which looks really cool. So next, we're going to be cutting out a tail for our permade. I'm just going to grab a permanent marker and carefully outline the basic shape of a tail. I'm also going to pull in our cat image so that I can get a rough estimate for how much I need at the top for the tail. I'm just going to take a quick measurement. And I will outline the tail on the tag. Just quickly trace that tail on here.
to get rid of the Sharpie marker lines, I'm just going to take a small dash of rubbing alcohol and rub that right off. Next, I'm going to grab some vintage photo and we're going to give these scales a little bit more definition. Okay, and let's see how that looks over here. Not bad. Now we need to give that tail some fins. And for that, I'm going to be grabbing a piece of crepe paper. We're going to take about a two inch, maybe two and a half inch section of crepe paper. And I'm going to spritz that with some salvage patina distress spray. And we'll quickly dry that off with our heat tool. Okay, and I'm going to give this a quick accordion fold. Just folding back and forth so we get a little bit more texture in the tail. Just like that, we have a nice fan fold. And now I will grab some distressed collage medium and we'll put this tail together. And I'm just going to hold and pinch that for the moment. Now, while that's drying, I've got a few more add-ons for this card. We're going to put some seaweed down here. I cut a few pieces using the Funky Cactus dies by Tim Holtz, and we're going to add those into our card base as some seaweed. I used some of the new Ideology Warm cardstock set to get these really good colors. And over the seaweed, I also added some Vintage Photo Distress Ink to get a little bit more of a grungy look on the coral and seaweed. Okay, I'm liking that arrangement. Now the next decision is, are we going to put the permade in front of or behind the seaweed pieces? I think we'll put some in front and some behind like that. Okay, well, now let's glue down our pieces.
Next, we're going to add a little banner over here with some text. Next, we're going to add our sentiment. Here on some Tim Holtz aviary cardstock, I have die cut some alphanumeric tiny type upper and lower case for my sentiment. And we've got the sound of summer. And I'm going to add some collage medium and place that onto the card. Okay, and last, I need to add in a little cartoon character over here. Over there, we're going to be adding in a little shark. You'll see where I'm going in a moment. Have you figured out yet where I'm going with this card? The little cartoon shark should be a clue, but I'll write it out just to be clear. just so there's no mistaking where this reference is going. The sound of summer. And here is the finished card on my take for the Funky Junkie blog challenge, Silly Sassy Summer, brought to you by Snarky Cats. I can't wait to see all of your wonderful makes, so don't forget to join us over at the Funky Junkie blog page. I will be sure to leave all links in the description if you'd like to participate in our Silly Sassy Summer Challenge. So, until next time, happy crafting!